Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you a really nice technique that you can use to create abstract or semi-abstract landscape paintings using ink and watercolour. And I'm going to use this acrylic ink for the demo. It's made by Dale Rowney. It's fairly basic stuff really. You can get it in most art stores, fairly cheap. Uh, most important thing though is that whatever ink you use is that when it's dry it's waterproof. I started by wetting the paper all over with the mister. It's fairly wet but it's, it's just sitting on the surface so you can see when, when the ink's applied it spreads out on its own. I'm just going to make sort of basic tree trunk kind of shape and then bring that across for a river bank whole time allowing the ink just to mix in with the water on the surface and move around creates nice interesting shapes on its own Just bring that straight down for a reflection. This is black ink that I'm using today, but you can experiment, use any colors that you've got. And make a nice sepia one and burnt umber, that's quite nice too. I like what happened there, you can see that's kind of almost created like a shape of a bush and its own reflection. Okay, just bring that shape over for the bank on the other side. Let's give that a little mist again, just allow the ink to move around. I'm going to switch to this which is a it's kind of like a little dip pen thing that I made myself with an old brush I took all the hairs out of it and replaced it with a matchstick and then just sharpened it at the end it's really nice for creating interesting shapes okay, so just suggest that uh, maybe some branches and twigs keeping it wet the whole time, just allowing everything to move around. I love that, the way the ink just sort of finds the, the drops of water on the surface and just, just moves into them doing its own thing. Creates some really interesting shapes. Just bring up another, maybe another tree trunk on the right there. Just allow it all kind of just to merge together as one big shape. suggest a mass of branches and and growth there yeah, let's just bring that straight down for reflection load more 
little trees, branches, grasses, whatever it is really. I like them. You can see there the way the water's kind of mixed with the ink on the top right there that it's kind of created its own misty effect. I've not had to do anything to that at all, it just did it by itself. It's a fantastic technique. Okay, so just suggest a reflection of that large branch. Reflections there. Saunders Waterford rough paper for this. It's 140 pounds. But you can use anything really. Bockenford works quite well for this technique. to the left hand side there I think I'll just bring that that bank up right over you can see it's still wet on the paper and it's forming its own forming its own uh, reflections and suggestion of grasses without having to do anything to bring up some trees on the left there. Switch back to the dip pen. instant tree there so it's just very loosely mirror everything there for the reflections doesn't have to be accurate Just very loose strokes with the with the dip pen, and it's just when the ink hits the water, it just creates the foliage for you. This kind of instantly paints a million branches. It's fantastic. Just spray a bit more water, allow that just all to run down. I think a few more grasses there on the right hand side. swap back to the brush quickly for that just to get a good quantity of ink on there and then come back in with a dip pen just to move it all around. And just add a smaller bush there, sort of make it look like it's a bit more in a distance. I 
I think that's all looking pretty good. Um, but I might just grab that bit of paper towel and then just just uh, blot some of it out, kind of make it look a bit more misty along the water line. see where the ink's been blotted out and it kind of leaves behind some of the marks made by the dip pen where it's scratched into the paper. It's kind of kind of an interesting effect. I'm fairly happy with that. I think I'll just dry that off quickly. Okay, now that's fully dry. It's very important to make sure that the ink is completely dry before you carry on with the next step. As you can see, I'm going to wet it all over again with the mist. Out. If any of that ink is wet at all, it will start to spread again and it will mix with the paint and it's not very nice effect, so use a heat gun or a, or a hair dryer for that. I'm going to use this um, for the paint. It's a giant rigger, really. I think it's like a size 10 or 12 sable. You see it comes to quite a nice point when it's wet. But it's good for broad washes as well. I mean, you can use it to do whole paintings, really. Fantastic little brush. And I've got some burnt sienna and some raw sienna. It's quite wet and just apply that into the wet of the paper just allow that to move around because all the darks are already in place because of the ink this is a fairly quick process really just create a bit of atmosphere okay just putting that on very loosely bring some of the colour down for the reflection in the water. Okay, add some ultramarine into there. bring it across for the wall so just some quick horizontal strokes just allow it all to blend together okay, make that a little bit darker that's just some burnt sienna and some ultramarine just put that in that top right corner I think that felt a little bit empty just some more ultramarine and just suggest maybe distant tree line or hill touch more blue into the sky
darken it off slightly again up in the top right to suggest maybe a few leaves or something there and add a bit of texture to the trees on the left. Let's grab a bit of paper towel and just soften the sky. I want to leave it white at the horizon just, just to add some light essentially. I always like to leave a bit of the white of the paper behind it. Always adds a nice light source. Okay, that's softened all the edges. I think that's pretty much it. I'm not sure if there's much more I can do to this. Okay, let's take the tape off and see what we've got. Overall, I'm quite happy with it. It's a nice little scene. Fairly high contrast with the black of the ink and then just a limited palette. Raw Sienna, Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna. I think if I did it again, I'd possibly make the sky and the water a bit darker just to add a, even more atmosphere, really. But obviously, you can see what you can do in just a few minutes and a few simple materials. Well, I hope you liked that. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments, got any questions, or just say hello. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.